If it's okay with you, before we dive into more lecture slides, I'm going to show you something that leads into the formation of ions. Actually, we've already kind of talked about this. So I want to pick on sodium chloride, the compound sodium chloride. We said it's an ionic compound, and I want to kind of look closer at how we get how it ends up to be an ionic bond between the Na and the Cl. So here what I've done is I have a sodium atom and a chlorine atom. If you look at the periodic table, you're going to see that sodium has 11 protons and the neutral sodium atom has 11 electrons. Chlorine has uh, 17 protons and the neutral chlorine atom has 17 electrons. So here we go. Uh, sodium actually is a 1A, so it has one valence electron. Chlorine is 7A, so it has seven valence electrons. Metals, we said, tend to lose electrons, and nonmetals tend to gain electrons. So check this out. And I already kind of said this as much, but the sodium will lose specifically one electron, and the chlorine will gain one electron. Let's go ahead and update the tally, see what that looks like. That means now the sodium, since it lost one, only has 10 electrons, and the chlorine now picked up one. It actually has 18 electrons. I want to point out something, kind of add it to this slide at this point. 10 electrons, if you look at the neutral atom that has 10 electrons, actually that corresponds to, and I'll put in brackets, neon. And if you look at the element that the neutral atom that has 18 electrons, that actually corresponds to argon. I mention this because at this point now, with the transfer of an electron, sodium, although it's still a sodium thing because it has 11 protons, now it has the same electrons as neon, and argon has the same electrons, excuse me, and chlorine has the same electrons as argon. That is specific, that is significant. I kind of drew over a little bit with regard to chlorine, but with regard to sodium, can you see where since it has 11 protons and 10 electrons, if they each carry the same kind of magnitude of charge, it's plus one charge. Over there under chlorine, can you see where it still has 17 protons but now has 18 electrons, so now it's got a, a net minus one charge. All right, so we're almost there, okay? Anything that's positively charged, we call a cation. Anything that's negatively charged, we call an anion. Sometimes I'll have students, and I, and I kind of like it, kind of think of the letter T in cation to kind of look like a plus sign. Okay, so we're almost done. We're about ready for that chemical bond to be formed. So now we have a plus one cation for sodium and a minus one anion for chlorine. And so that dash dot dot dot, remember, I usually use a dashed line to show a chemical bond that's an ionic chemical bond. And, and that's it, all right? That is so cool. So the example that we looked at with regard to sodium chloride was an example of just one atom. Mono means one, okay? So there was just one atom that was an ion. In lab this week, or lab... Uh, yeah, I think this week, we're actually going to talk about polyatomic ions. And polyatomic, poly means more than one. So an example of a polyatomic ion, I think we already looked at one. Remember the NO, let's see, which one did we do? We did a few of them. But NO3 is actually the nitrate ion and it has four atoms there connected together all running around with a minus one charge. That's a polyatomic ion. And we already talked that actually in the example we looked at, what was the cation? It was the sodium. Okay, that was the cation. What was the anion? Okay, it was the chlorine. And one of the things that I need you to keep in mind is I kind of talked about the JAG. It separates what the metals from the nonmetals. Okay, and the metals are going to form cations. They're going to give up electron or electrons, and the nonmetals are going to form anions. All things to keep in the back of your mind or the front of your mind, depending upon what you're doing. OK? 
okay? So metals are on, there's a lot more metals on the periodic table than nonmetals. Metals are on the left of the JAG and they form cations by losing electrons. Go ahead and add this to the slide so we're on the same page. They lose, we're going to actually see they lose all of their valence electrons. And anions, uh, those are your nonmetals, and they gain electrons and become neg negatively charged. Okay, so this is a positive and this is a negative. So I hope that all works for you. So you're going to need to be able to, on the test, kind of interpret this, and it builds on stuff we've talked about. So we said that you can kind of, for, we introduced it for isotopes. Remember, isotopes have different mass numbers. In the upper left-hand corner, using this notation, will be your mass number. In the lower left-hand corner will be your atomic number. It's a little bit redundant because atomic number is what number of protons. Uh, mass number is what number of protons plus number of neutrons, right? Now we have something different. In the upper right-hand corner, we have the charge. If you don't see anything up there, it's neutral. But like in the case of sodium, what we do? Uh, plus one. In the case of chlorine, we did what? A minus one. That was the charge. Okay. All right. So here we go. We should be able to pick out all three subatomic particles for this particular isotopic form of calcium. So calcium, of course, that's the atomic number there, that's the mass number there, and let's see, plus two. So has it lost electrons or gained electrons? Well, it must have lost electrons. How many electrons? Two electrons. Okay, and metals tend to do that, and calcium is definitely a metal. So you can answer these questions. How many protons does it have? Well, you can pick off the atomic number, 20. How many electrons does it have? Well, if it lost two electrons, it used to have 20 and now it has 18. How many neutrons does it have? This goes back to unit 2. We can subtract 30, from 39 we can subtract 20, so I got 19. Okay, we're good. Well, let's do, that's a cation, let's do an anion here. Okay, this particular isotopic form of chlorine has a mass number of 36. Of course, it has an atomic number of 17. Let's answer these questions. How many protons does it have? Well, it better have 17. How many electrons does it have? Well, it looks like it gained one electron past the electrons it already had. So I'm getting 18 plus, excuse me, 17 plus 1, 18. How many neutrons does it have? We can take the mass number and from that subtract the atomic number. So 36 minus 17 is 19. So you've got a problem here to kind of get you ready for your test and make sure we're kind of all know what we're doing.